Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar, Digital Communication for Donor Engagement. Thank you all for joining. We're very grateful and excited to have a number of fantastic guests today. And I know there's a number of people still signing on. We'll give all of those that are still joining us a couple of moments to check in. A couple of basic housekeeping. If you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and type them into the chat. We're going to leave as much time as possible, ideally almost 20 minutes, and we may even go a little bit past the top of the hour, um, depending on how many questions we can answer and how many you are all submitting. Um, if you have any audio issues today, you'll see there's a more button on the top of your any meeting webinar screen. I'd recommend you, if you do have any audio issues, to choose the More button and then switch to Dial In by phone. And sometimes internet connectivity makes for shaky audio, so feel free to switch to phone if you have any you know, issues hearing us. Also, another note, we will be sending out a link to the recorded version of this webinar, so if you miss anything, um, you'll be able to go back, review, share with your colleagues, um, as well as download the presentation. Um, so today we are talking about digital communication for donor engagement. We've got some great speakers today. We've got Leah Godfrey, from the, who is the uh, Interactive Specialist at Summit Marketing. We've got Christina Holman, Director of Integrated Marketing at Salvation Army. Kate Schneppel, who's the Director of Communications and Development at Wildlife SOS. Molly Boncaro is the Associate Vice President of the United Way of Central Maryland, Christina Soto, the Education Manager at the California Wolf Center, and our very own Jeremy Koenig, the Director of Marketing for Mobile Cause. We're going to talk a lot about today. We've got a packed agenda for you. So we're going to talk a lot about demographic preferences, and Jeremy's going to go through some benchmarks and best practices and current trends. And we've got four fantastic success stories with each of our guests. And then we're going to go through a live demo so you can actually see how you can utilize Mobile Cause and how Mobile Cause has supported some of these, all of these success stories and see firsthand how it'll work. And we're going to go through, like I said, a Q&A process at the end. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Jeremy, who is a marketer um, and expert in multi-channel communications. Jeremy, take it away. Thanks, Chris. Well, first, I'd just like to thank everybody that's jumped on this webinar. We're really excited. Uh, all the speakers and myself truly believe that digital communication is an essential component of donor engagement to increase your donor base, to engage your supporters, and to keep people passionate and excited about your cause. I'd like to get started by really laying the foundation for what our speakers are going to share with you over the next hour. Um, and I want to get started by talking about some of the demographic preferences that your donors um, already have. Um, real quick, millennials are ages 20 to 35, and they actually prefer to get communications from nonprofits uh, by text and social media. Keep in mind that millennials are the most likely to participate in crowdfunding and team fundraising. Um, Generation Xers prefer text, emails, voice calls, and social posts. It's actually uh, very cool that this generation specifically is in tune with all of those different channels. I'll add a little note here that uh, Generation X females are much more engaged in social than males are. Um, Gen Xers are actually the most likely to go out and ask others for money um, on behalf of your organization and to volunteer. Uh, baby boomers uh, actually prefer voice calls and email and can be annoyed by um, text messaging and social media. However, again, females are huge, female baby boomers specifically, are huge adopters of Facebook. And many, many, many baby boomers use text messaging as a primary mode of communication because it is the primary mechanism in which they talk to their kids and grandkids. Um, finally, the greatest generation, which are which are all your donors that are over 70, uh, they actually prefer voice calls and direct mail. These 
this generation of donors um, typically is not aware of text, um, as well as social media posts that you are leveraging to get your uh, message out. Um, greatest are important because they still are a large percentage of the overall donor base in the U.S., um, and they absolutely do res respond to direct mail campaigns. Um, next, I'd like to talk about some benchmarks and best practices for digital communication. Uh, I've listed four here, uh, text messaging, social media, email, and direct mail. And these will be the primary topics of discussion throughout this webinar. Some high-level stats to bring yourself and your team up to speed so that you can make decisions about uh, where you spend your resources within your nonprofit um, are this. Uh, text messages, believe it or not, have a 99% read rate, 90% of those are read within three minutes. So as you can imagine, this is an incredible opportunity for nonprofit organizations to get their message across to all donors and constituents with an almost guaranteed uh, read rate. Uh, best practice that we recommend for text messaging is to start, if you don't already, collecting mobile numbers on all donation pages, registration forms, um, and to begin sending regular messages for advocacy, um, events, and giving. Uh, social media, uh, believe it or not, uh, has a 73% of smartphone users uh, use social media daily. So this means three quarters of the people, close to three quarters of the people in the United States that have a smartphone are on some form of social media daily, whether that be Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, et cetera. Um, a little interesting note is that 23% of these uh, users active on social media actually check their Facebook five times a day. Um, one of the best things that your organization can do to leverage social media is to be consistently posting videos and photos um, to campaigns that will be shared and liked by the networks of your network. Um, next, uh, it's important to recognize that email, um, while it has a low uh, read rate and open rate, it's actually still very important because it is that primary communication mechanism with baby boomers specifically. Uh, email has 14, across the board of the United States, email has a 14% uh, open rate average. And, and believe it or not, half of those emails that are opened are done on a smartphone. And so it's very important for nonprofits as they are sending out e-blast campaigns to ensure that their emails are mobile friendly. It's important to also to take note that 63% of smartphone users delete emails immediately if they are not mobile friendly. Uh, mobile friendly, what that means in short, is that the email itself is formatted to change size with the device that is viewing the email. Uh, lastly, I want to take a second to talk about direct mail. 95% um, of nonprofit organizations in the U.S. spend uh, a portion, if not the, the larger portion, of their fundraising budget on direct mail. It's very important to realize that recipients of direct mail are 40% more likely to, to respond to mail if they have received a heads-up notification, and this can be a text or an email. So if they see that text or email, before they get that piece of direct mail, they're 40 times more likely to respond to it. It's amazing. Uh, another tip that we recommend, and this is becoming more and more normal as big direct mail organizations uh, come into the forefront of mobile, is to promote mobile-friendly online forms along with traditional um, r return envelopes, et cetera, to make it very easy for people to type in a short link and donate right from their mobile phone. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Chris to introduce our next speaker. Thanks, Jeremy. And thanks, everybody, for submitting questions. Again, definitely keep the questions coming. We'll be collecting them and getting to answer as many of them as we can at the end of the presentation. Um, and so continuing with some of our success stories so you all can learn from what others have done successfully, I want to introduce Kate Schneppel, who is the Director of Communications and Development at Wildlife SOS. Kate's been on the Board of Directors from 2006 until 2014 and has been a nonprofit communications professional for more than 15 years. So we're grateful and thank you to Kate for joining us. Welcome. 
Thanks. Hello. So just wanted to maybe you can tell us a little bit about, you know, sort of the background at Wildlife and, you know, where you started in terms of this particular success story and, you know, what you were really looking to accomplish. Sure. So we had decided that we were going to launch a new campaign, and that campaign was to rescue all of the remaining circus elephants in India. Um, that was about 67 elephants when we started, and we decided to launch the campaign late November last year, and so it seemed the perfect time to really be able to focus on our end-of-year giving and to put all of the end-of-year giving impetus, you know, to that particular campaign to rescue the circus elephants. And so, you know, I think maybe this kind of dovetails into some of the questions we've been getting and some of what Jeremy just talked about. So obviously, you know, you used a variety of communication channels, right, text, email, social media, press release. You know, how did you kind of go about, like, you know, selecting which channels to use and kind of figuring out what was the right mix of, you know, how did they work together? How did you kind of start that process? You know, I think right from the get-go, we wanted this campaign to be different than anything that we had done in the past and that we wanted it to be everywhere. We wanted it to be very unified in our messaging. So we honestly looked at just every channel that we had available to us and figured out what was the best way to utilize it to support this campaign. Um, so when we launched the campaign, we started with a press release, gave the media maybe a 12-hour head start, um, and then we posted to social channels. We put something up on our website. We sent out an email blast. Uh, we did a mobile alert as well to let people know that this campaign was starting. And we directed everyone to um, a crowdfunding campaign to start supporting the campaign, and we also chose one elephant named Susie that we thought her story was really compelling. She'd been in the circus a long time. She was blind. Um, we felt like telling her story would be a great way to get people engaged. So we really just put everything we had into this campaign and all, throughout all of our channels and tried to coordinate our efforts. Right. And now, did you, after kind of going through this, did you learn anything about how you know, maybe using one channel made another maybe more effective, you know, kind of to, to Jeremy's last example. Did, you know, say, for example, su supporting the campaign with text, did that, you know, make one of the other channels kind of more effective? I mean, what did you kind of learn about how the channels kind of played together? You know, I think one thing we learned is that people really love to hear about even the same, the very same news. They love hearing about it in different channels. So, we were a little bit concerned that we were maybe hitting people too many times if they had seen a Facebook post about you know, when we finally did rescue Susie, for example. You know, they had just seen a Facebook post, they received a text message to alert them that she'd been rescued, and then we sent an email and we thought, okay, are we overdoing this? But what we found is, that especially with news as great as that, um, that an animal's been rescued, people love to hear about it in, in as many ways as they can. Um, and they really, you know, one other thing is that if you tell them that you're going to let them know by text as soon as some, an animal's rescued, you need to let them know that. Um, we had people who heard about it on Facebook before they got the message on their phone, and they were bent out of shape about that. So um, really, I guess, ultimately, we found that all the channels seemed to really work well together and that people were subscribing in various ways to get this very same news. Interesting. And what would you say sort of to, you know, to maybe those that are, you know, maybe in different parts of the country or feel like their, you know, particular donor base is maybe less technologically sophisticated or anything? Did you have any kind of concerns or thoughts about, about that, you know, when, as you were proceeding? You know, honestly, not really. We are a relatively new nonprofit. And so we never, you know, we haven't done direct mail We've always been digital, um, so for our supporters, we felt like this was absolutely the way to go. Um, we've never sent out a piece of mail, snail mail, about this campaign. Um, so we didn't have that concern, and I think that the great thing is that people get to opt in. So I don't, you know, the people that are going to receive a, a mobile alert from you are ones that wanted one. Um, so you're not going to be in the category of scamming people digitally. They're definitely all opting in for all the various messaging. Right. And now, in terms of, like, some of those trends, like, I guess, you know, are you seeing, like, kind of maybe the next time around, like, is there anything that you might do differently or that you learned, 
you know, um, from one, you know, sort of would you shift the order and how you launch things in different channels? Or, you know, I guess, is there anything that you might do different, you know, next time based on what you experienced this time? Um, I think one thing we learned midstream is that people responded, and when it came to an actual donation ask, people responded much better to something very specific. So if we posted something on Facebook um, and said, we need 100 people to give $5 a month to do X, that that worked much better than just a generic request for funds. So I think next time around, we would just start out with doing that and be sure that anytime we didn't ask, that there was something very specific that we were asking for. Um, and, you know, we really did want to increase our number of recurring donors, and especially for those people who are going to commit to giving on a monthly basis, to have something very specific that you're asking for really seems to make a big difference. Wonderful. And then, like, I guess the final question is, is of all of the channels, you know, did you find that, like, one maybe, you know, drove more immediate or ultimately led to, like, larger donations? I mean, did more come through text versus social versus email? I mean, any sense for that? I think probably the biggest number came through email. That said, I think we were most surprised by how well the mobile alert did. Um, we really were impressed by that. We, we ended up with 200 new recurring donors um, through Mobile Cause, specifically for the Circus Elephant campaign. And we were surprised by that and, and really thrilled by it. Wonderful. Well, great. Well, thank you so much, Kate, and we'll look forward. And if, again, if everyone has specific questions for Kate, we'll, we'll definitely be gathering them. Please submit them into the chat, and we'll get to them at the end as much as we can. So I'm going to kind of move on as we have so much great content for everybody today. Um, so next I'd like to introduce, um, we've got two amazing speakers. We've got Christina Holman, who is the Director of Integrated Marketing and Mail at the Salvation Army. She oversees direct mail fundraising, online fundraising, and social media marketing. Uh, with her is colleague Leah Godfrey, um, who's the, who handles interactive strategies at Summit Marketing. And she's a strategic thinker that helps Summit Marketing clients achieve their digital and social goals. And today they are talking about their work together on the Salvation Army of Eastern Michigan. So welcome, ladies. Thanks for joining Hi, thank you. Glad to be here. So, Christina, I guess maybe you could tell us a little bit, you know, sort of where you all started and what, you know, at least for this particular success story, you know, what were your sort of initial goals, challenges, what were you looking to accomplish with this particular program? So we were really looking to add another channel that we could um, communicate with our donors through. And our, our biggest goal was to be able to start to communicate with the millennials and the Gen Xers, and you know our our database has a lot of the baby boomers and older, and so we were trying to to build our database based on the different generations that we have in our our metro area that are coming up through the workforce right now. And so then I so guess we took, so, yep. So then we we took our database. And we actually did an append with our cell phone, uh, just the different numbers that we had in our database, and we were able to um, to have enough people that we could send a text messages out to. Um, so we did, we did two sides. We did the text out, and then we also did where we set up keywords for different events that we had. Fantastic. And so that basically allowed you then to – you know, supplement your database and now reach more than 9,000 people via mobile. Is that right? Right. Correct. And how did you all kind of go about sort of figuring out, like, you know, you've got a five-part text message series. Like, I guess, you know, maybe you can walk us through that, that process. Like, how did you sort of design that, uh, you know, to deliver on your goals? So the Salvation oh. Army biggest holiday season is um, during the holidays. It's, and that's our biggest fundraising. And so what we tried to do is with Christina, we came up um, with text messages of insider information and 
um, asking for helping us spread awareness and direct donation ads throughout the holidays. Um, and so that was the different five texts that went over the holiday season, including um, the Bed and Bread Club, which is a local radiothon that um, Christina's team puts on there in Detroit. And it helped um, people know in the community what was going on with the Salvation Army and how they could get involved. And so I do. I guess, you know, maybe you could all both share some insight in terms of, you know, for those that are on the phone that maybe, again, have been sort of doing more traditional, you know, digital marketing or even, you know, offline marketing like direct mail, who are now kind of like figuring out how do they layer this in, you know? I mean, I guess, do you have any recommendations? Like, did you, how did you sort of introduce this new, you know, channel, which, you know, of texting, but, you know, on mobile sort of to this existing base that you had? Sure. So one of the first things that we did um, was that we first sent a subscription notice out to all the mobile numbers, and so we got those um, in. But then we also sent out um, advertisements on Facebook and Twitter, letting them know um, that they could give their mobile cause and, um, those, and subscribe to the list to receive text to, uh, updates about what was going on in the community. Um, and in the future, we're also wanting to use the donation forms for um, as a way of giving through direct mail too, um, just another online, going online option. Um, and so um, all of our social media campaigns all link to that um, donation forms too based on what kind of campaign it is, whether it's the Bed and Bread Club or it's just a general ask for the Salvation Army so that they can put it in their general pot. And um, so we just try to integrate it that way within the messaging throughout each platform. Right. And now, you know, do you have any thoughts around, like, how do you mix up the content that you're putting out via SMS and mobile, like in the sense of, you know, is it always a, an ask, right? Or is it yeah. also, you know, like, is there a recommended mix of like, hey, here's some news or, hey, here's mm -hmm. an event, you know, versus, hey, donate now? Is there sort of a recommended, yeah. you know, ratio? Yeah, we definitely try to have a really good mix in there. Um, a lot of times we'll send out e-cards for Thanksgiving, so it'll be a link to a video that says Happy Thanksgiving, and um, we're blessed because of donors like you. Um, but then we also have insider information of, you know, first announcement of where the Radiothon is going to be this year. Um, so we try to mix that in. I would say the ratio um, is probably two – to, to for every one direct ask, um, whether it's informational for or if it's um, just a advocacy promotion for the text. Right. So sort of a two to one ratio. Is that kind of what you said? That's about. Yeah, that's what we do. Right. And what about frequency? I mean, obviously, the more activities. I mean, it looks obviously the South, you know, it's certainly like seasonally, right? There's going to be a lot of things going on, but is there, did you find, you know, I mean, what's the appropriate frequency that you use this channel, right? Is it daily, I think because weekly? Of our, I think because of what our, our, our marketing schedule already is set up as, we send out an, a mail appeal every month. We send out a um, an email message once a month. So we, we tried to stay within that that marketing calendar, and so now we have it on our calendar that we'll send out one text message each month. Right, right. So that seems like the appropriate frequency um, for that. So it's so basically, it's kind of on a similar schedule as your email communications. Is that right. right. It might be a little bit more towards the end of the year. We're you know we're pushing year end giving, so it, it you know we'll probably send out two or three in in December just just for that push. Right. And kind of also then, so then the next question is kind of related to the last, you know, do, are you finding that like layering in the mobile is making your other channels more effective, right? Or reinforcing the message that people are getting via email and other things. Like how are you finding that they are working together? 
we definitely see a difference on social media. Um, it's just another touch to those donors that are already getting the direct mail in the in their in their box and in the email in their inbox. And on social, they're seeing those advertisements and order organic messages, but then also they're seeing it on their cell phone. So it's just another reminder of, you know, this is a event that's going on or a way to give and support your local community. So we're definitely seeing that um, there's recognition and the community is really responding and um, is more knowledgeable about the Salvation Army. Right. And so did you feel like, did it accomplish your goal of like, so it sounded like obviously you're trying to get, you know, more millennials or younger, you know, donors into your mix rather than, you know, you know, older donors. Like, did it, did you feel that like adding this channel was, you know, allowed you to accomplish that and, you know, and attract new people into the Salvation Army who weren't there before? Uh, I believe it attracted both uh, those who were not there before that are in the millennial and Gen Xers as well as some of our current donors who have just found another channel that they can now give through. So right. both. Right. So then I guess, you know, for a final question, like what, you know, do, do you either maybe first from Christina and then to, to you, Leah, like what recommendations, you know, might you have to like those that are like listening that are maybe in a similar circumstance that they've, you know, have a certain donor base and they want to expand, you know, who those are, maybe give them another channel. Are there any sort of things that you learn that you might recommend? I think just to think about who your audience is. You know, if you're going to ha if you have events and you have a list of events you can choose from, to look at that list and, and think about, you know, what your goals are for for mobile cause or for mobile giving and how those line up with the audience that you have. Uh, for us, you know, we, we chose a couple events where we knew we could get the millennials and we could get the Gen Xers. Um, and it, that's why we chose those specific events. Right. I think also, oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, please. I think mm -hmm. also the other, another thing to do um, that would help drive more um, traffic to your SMS would definitely be um, spending a little bit of money on social and um, reaching that audience that you already have and getting them engaged and signing up for text messages so that they are in the know of what's going on in your community. Fantastic. Well, those are great insights, ladies. Thank you so much. And I know there's a lot of questions coming in. So, again, if you all have questions, please continue to submit them, and we'll do our best to get to as many of them as we can. Again, a couple of reminders. One, if you are having any audio issues, definitely you know, choose the more icon at the top of your screen and switch to dial in by phone. Um, secondly, we will be sending out a recorded version of this webinar along with the slides. So if you miss anything or want to re-review it or share it, um, you will be able to do so. Um, so now we're going to move on, and I'd like to introduce um, Molly Boncaro, who's the Associate Vice President of the United Way of Central Maryland. And Molly has been a part of the team at United Way for almost 12 years working in fundraising and development. Welcome, Molly. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So I guess like, like others, maybe you could tell us a little bit, you know, where you started and what were your kind of immediate goals for this particular program and give us a little bit of background on it, if you would, please. Sure. So, um, you know, in this specific campaign that, that I'm going to be talking about, we've, we've had great success with Mobile Cause. It's been a great partnership. But for this specific campaign, it's, it's a little bit of a unique situation. Um, in late April, our city, Baltimore City, um, sort of erupted in, in crisis with all the rioting around um, the Freddie Gray case. And there was a lot of damage and there, were, there was a lot of concern at the same time from people in our community who wanted to help. Um, so at that time, the governor's office asked us to create a fund that they could direct people to who wanted to provide some support. So very quickly, within you know a, a few hours, we we were able to create a fundraising campaign through Mobile Calls. We decided on a crowdfunding campaign, um, so we were able to create something very very quickly and get it up quickly because of the immediate need um, 
that was there. And so our campaign was to uh, give people a place to donate in order to help their city and restore Baltimore from the um, chaos that had uh, ensued. And that was really our goal. We started out actually with a $20,000 uh, financial goal, and it, it quickly grew. We kept changing the goal. Um, and you can see in just a few weeks, we raised over a half a million dollars. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. And now, like, you know, in terms of these channels, because obviously, you know, we're, we've been talking about all the digital communications channels, and we've, you know, Jeremy, you know, kind of talked about some trends and the usage and, uh, of each of those channels. I guess, you know, back to the start, like, how did you kind of select the channels that you felt were the most appropriate to get the message out there? What was the thinking sure. behind sort of that process? So, um, we knew for this campaign, we decided early on that we weren't going to take a fee for it. So 100% of the donations were going to go directly to um, you know, the cause. So we didn't have a, a, a real budget. So we knew right away that paid digital advertising wasn't going to be something we were able to do. Um, so we really focused on our earned and owned media properties. Um, so you know, the, I think the very first thing we did is we sent out a blast email. Um, and then, you know, this was our first crowdfunding campaign. We weren't really sure how successful it was going to be. Um, so we followed up that email by calling all of our best friends. We called our ambassadors. We called our high-level donors. We called local um, other leaders in the community. And we asked them to, you know, pay attention to the email, to, you know, click here, and to become a fundraiser for us and to start their own fundraising campaign as a part of our campaign, um, and we found that was really successful. So, you know, the, the email followed by the personal follow-up asking them to um, develop these fundraising pages and then to send it on to their contacts. Um, from there, you know, of course, we wanted to have a strong social media presence. We were all over social media. We did some sponsored posts. We did some sponsored tweets. Um, we created a, a website in addition to, um, to our mobile site. So people you know, who are coming and just looking for, at uwcm.org could um, get some more information. Um, we did blog posts. You know, we wanted to have some, some meaningful content there as well. Um, and then we did a lot of also PR. So we did press releases. We had some donated billboards put up around the, um, the city. We had uh, at Raven Stadium we were doing an event. We had them put it, you know, our text number up on the Jumbotron. Um, so we, we really tried to use a multi-channel approach to reach as many people as possible. And we found we, had a, we, you know, we were able to acquire a lot of new donors, people that we didn't know at all um, were coming and, and making a donation. So the challenge for us now is, is really to retain them and to keep growing them as donors. Right, right, fantastic. And sort of I, I think, again, what it sounds like is that, you know, you're not approaching each of these channels in isolation, right? Like it's like just a singular where each of them are supporting the other. I mean, maybe could you talk to us a little bit about, you know, for those like how do you figure out the order in which, okay, first you're going to email and then maybe you're going to follow up with SMS messages. You know, how, do you, how, do, how, do you, how did you approach how all of these channels kind of work together? You know, it was um – you know, I'd like to, to tell you we were more strategic <laughs> than, um, than, than we probably were. Um, we, I think we were really lucky in that it took off, you know, kind of created, it had a life of its own. So we really, because people had very um, different opinions about the situation that was happening in Baltimore, and we weren't really sure how people would respond. But the support from our community was really amazing, and people, we found people wanted this content. So... Um, so, you know, as we were delivering things, as, you know, we sent the first email, we found that there was a very high open rate. You know, as we were putting some social media posts out there, we found there were so many likes. So the more we put out there, the more um, people liked it, the more people shared it, and, you know, it just kept growing from there. But you're right, you know, all the content had to be um, cohesive and, and together. And so we, you know, we really tried to keep a simple message and to, um, you know, create just some, some meaningful content behind it. Right. 
And, and I guess kind of back to some of the other questions, I mean, it sounds like, I mean, obviously you and your role, you have a pretty good sense for your donor base and which channels, I mean, even just within which, you know, social media outlets people prefer to use, right? I mean, and so that's where you kind of focus your efforts on the channels that you've seen the highest level of engagement from. Is that right? Yeah, and, you know, for for this particular campaign, there were there were people – from across all of the generations that um, that we had talked about early on that wanted to participate in this campaign. So we had to have multiple channels in order for, to reach everyone. Um, one of our largest donors is, is somebody that, you know, we found out is still in college. So, um, you know, she just comes from a very wealthy family. So, you know, yeah, it was a lot of different channels in order to reach a lot of different generations. Interesting. And so I guess, was there anything sort of unexpected or, you know, once you went through this, like, I guess, you know, was there anything that surprised you about what you kind of learned that, that maybe you're going to apply going forward? Um, so I will, I will say that I wish we had been more thoughtful at the very beginning of how we set up our um, mobile form and what information we were asking for. You know, it's a balance. We, you know, at the very beginning, we were like, we just, we wanted to get people through the process as quickly as possible. So we asked for very little information from them because we wanted them to get to the, you know, the donation very, very quickly. In hindsight, I wish we had been a little bit more thoughtful and, you know, made sure that we required uh, email as a field and, you know, cell phone as a field so that we could continue to reach out and cultivate these these people. We did realize that we made a switch, you know, midstream, which was, you know, easy to do. Um, but in hindsight, I think that's one of the things that I learned. Right. It's just sort of like, so you would have would have liked to have, okay, we, we're going to make the, you know, add one more field on the form, but that will allow us to capture this one more piece of data that's going to be super valuable going forward. Exactly. Fantastic. And then I guess any final sort of recommendations, you know, based on all of this that, you know, for, for anybody that's kind of looking to, you know, add mobile or, you know, add more mobile into what they're doing, is, you know, are, are there any sort of best practices or recommendations, you know, maybe that what we just talked through is one. Is there anything else that you might suggest to everyone um, as they're kind of embarking on their own, co you know, program or campaign? Sure. So, so I will say, and I've seen, you know, some of the the questions on the side, and I think for us, what has worked best has been being very specific about where the money's going. Um, so we've done other campaigns where it's, you know, this much will help do this, and you know, this will help purchase a basket for somebody who's entering a new home who's previously homeless. So being as specific as possible about where the money is going has, for us, proven to be more successful. Fantastic. And again, everyone, I know there's a lot of questions, and so we're going to, you know, save as much time as we can, and I'll gather some of these questions and direct them back to Molly here in a moment. Um, but again, in order to get all of this great content to you, we're going to move on to our next success story. So thank you, Molly, for that. It was great. Um, so moving on, I'm going to introduce Christina Soto, who is the Education Manager at the California Wolf Center, and she works on fundraising, marketing, and internal and external communication. Welcome. Welcome, Christina. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? Fantastic. So thanks for, for joining us. And uh, so, again, like everyone else, maybe you could tell us a little bit about sort of, I think you're in the situation where, which maybe applies to, you know, a number of folks on the phone where, you know, you've done a lot of traditional communications, it sounds right, like, right, where you've done a lot of mailing and, and really you're just, just really getting started into the digital communications realm. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So our database, we have um, – donors that have been with us for a really long time and respond to mailed appeals. So that's something that we've been doing pretty reliably throughout the history of our nonprofit. And we just started getting really involved with social media, doing email newsletters, and we're really looking forward to the mobile aspect um, that Mobile Cause offers to really allow us to reach multiple generations. And so I guess what, what you know, sort of prompted, I mean, I'm guessing it's this is sort of, was there anything you had to do organizationally to kind of get support for, you know, putting more emphasis on mobile or digital 
Like, you know, what, yeah, what did you do kind of internally to, to get that consensus? It really came from our kind of rapid growth on, in particular, Facebook. So we have a lot of people who like us on Facebook, and we've done two crowdfunding campaigns successfully already and kind of seeing really how easy it is to raise funds digitally versus putting the time, the effort, the funds into a mail-out appeal. Um, it seemed kind of like a no-brainer to kind of put a little bit more energy into digital and also into to mobile as well. And when you were thinking about this, like, so I guess, you know, did you, how did you think that they would play with one another in terms of like, okay, did you use mail to support, you know, mobile or vice versa? Like, how did you kind of, as you were working on this program, kind of use all of the, the, the camp, you know, the channels to help one another? So we, um, we've we always had on our website kind of sign up for a mailing list, and on that we've always had a place for someone to put their phone number. So that was kind of lucky for us that we've been collecting that information from the start, which is why we had so much information to upload into Mobile Cause. Um, in the past when we've been doing crowdfunding campaigns and things like that, we were promoting on Facebook. So we've used the digital world to kind of help each other out. But as far as mail appeals, that's always really kind of stood alone. But we were just kind of lucky enough to collect phone numbers throughout the, the history of that. Right. And like, I, and kind of, you know, back to the question of like what you designed to send, you know, maybe mm -hmm. you can talk to everyone a little bit about like, how did you think about, okay, what were your sort of best practices in sending text messages in terms, you know, what was the, like, the ratio of, of sort of content that's educational or inspiring versus, you know, sort of straight asks? Like, what, you know, how did you kind of work through that, you know, sort of content yeah. communication approach? Mm -hmm. So for us, we really put a focus on making text at the beginning informational just because, um, since we've never done mobile before, we've never really reached these people in this way. We want to make sure that they know our mission. We want to make sure that they know what we're doing with their funds first before we ask them. Um, so that's kind of what we decided to do to kind of spread awareness initially and then um, focus on the ask. And, and did you figure out like sort of how many, you know, how long or how many, you know, messages or touches before, you know, in terms of before you did ask? Like, what, what did you kind of feel made the most sense in terms of, like, so how would you recommend maybe to others that are kind of thinking about a similar thing where it does make sense, don't just immediately ask the first time mm -hmm. you start using the channel, right? Like, what were your yeah. thoughts about, how did you think about how long and how many messages until you started asking? Yeah, honestly, we're still trying to figure it out. <laughs> um, but for, you know, people that we kind of have a, a more personable relationship with that are our donors, that are of a younger generation, um, we kind of are having conversations with them and asking them, you know, how would you respond to us doing texting campaigns? You know, how comfortable are you with the idea of asking through a text message? What do you want to see happen first? Um, you know, similar to the, the previous success story, one of our biggest donors is a, a recent college graduate. So having that relationship and kind of getting her opinion on how she wants us to communicate with her um, is really valuable information. So we're still trying to figure it out, kind of that perfect balance. Um, but I would recommend, you know, if you have a donor that you have a good relationship with, getting their opinion on it. Right. And so is that, I guess, so kind of into, you know, your final thoughts or recommendations for those that are listening, you know, what, you know, based on, again, where you were and and where you are in this process, like, you know, any learnings that you might recommend to people that are in a similar position? Yeah, um, we're, a, we're a smaller organization, and so it was scary for us to make this decision, definitely. Um, if you talk to Corey, who's our kind of contact at Mobile Cause, it kind of took us a while to kind of pull the trigger and decide to get involved in Mobile Cause, but it was a really great decision for us to do. Um, we have always done mailed appeals, like I said, but, you know, we've learned that 
how you reach donors is really important, and you have to do it in multiple ways to connect with everyone who is interested in, in your mission and your organization. So I think that was kind of our, our biggest point that we learned through this whole experience so far is that it's worth the risk, definitely, um, to learn new ways to communicate with your donors because you'll reach people that you never knew had the capacity to give in the first place. Right, right. Fantastic. Well, great. Thank you so much for sharing. And again, I'm going to move on quickly so we can get all of the rest of the content in and save time for everybody to get some of their specific questions answered. So thank you so much, Christina. And I will, again, everybody, if you have specific questions for Christina about, you know, the size of her organization, how they handled some of the things that they needed to do in order to roll this out, um, you know, definitely please feel free to submit those questions and I'll make time to get to them as much as we can. Um, so now I'd like to transition back to Jeremy, who's going to kind of walk all of you through exactly how all of this works so you can see firsthand. And I think it'll answer a lot of the questions that have been coming in about, you know, really how to do it. So, Jeremy, uh, please take it away. Thanks, Chris, and thanks, speakers. I'm actually learning a lot. Um, believe it or not, I'm one of the original architects on the way that Mobile Cause text messaging with donors works, and so it's very cool to see uh, ideas that myself and my team have had in years past actually come to life and, and, and uh, fruition. So I'm going to walk you guys through a live demo of how you can build your mobile subscriber list and send messages to donors and constituents. Um, so the first thing I'm going to have you all do is to pull out your cell phones. And so if you are listening to this recorded webinar, you can also do this. Um, pull out your cell phones, just like you see here in the picture, and send a new text message to the phone number 51555. So I'm typing that into my phone, 251555. And then the message I would like you to send is capital M, capital C, capital A, capital U, capital S, capital E. Um, so M cause in all capitals with no space. And then go ahead and hit send. This is an example of a subscription keyword. And so what you guys all did is you subscribed to receive alerts from Mobile Cause webinars. So if you were a a nonprofit at an event or anywhere in person, you can promote your keyword as the easiest way to uh, build your subscription list so that essentially you can give people mobile alerts, whether it be Restore Baltimore or Wolves or Elephants or the Salvation Army. Um, notice also I customized the reply message that you received that says, Thanks for subscribing. Watch this video. You guys can all watch that later. Um, believe it or not, that's an exclusive Mobile Cause Marketing video that we haven't released to the pub public yet. It's very awesome. Um, you can learn everything that Mobile Cause does uh, in just a short 60-second video. Um, if you look here to the right of the text message screenshot, you actually see where I set that up in the Mobile Cause platform. Um, you can see that I set up the keyword MCOS. Um, I set the messaging type to one-time response, and I actually typed in the message that you guys received. This message is completely customizable, um, and uh, you'll notice that the compliance language, message and data rates may apply, text help for help, stop to end, is actually included in every message, and that is what is required by carriers for nonprofits to send text messages to their existing donors. I will mention there's actually a special provision uh, in the Telephone Consumer Protection Act that 501c non 501c3 nonprofits can actually text message um, all their donors and subscriber or donors and supporters from their database um, as long as they include the compliance information. Um, the next thing that I'm going to show you is how easy it is to upload a list. So uh, this is actually a list that I uploaded from the webinar registrants today. Um, you can see I just imported a CSV file. Uh, and then I mapped the fields into my database, um, very similar to when you import a spreadsheet into your email software to send messages. And then after I map uh, those contacts, you'll see that they actually populate here uh, in the 
uh, essentially mobile communication dashboard. I'm actually going to just hit refresh on my window, and I can see now that 144 of you on the call have actually just texted MCAUSE um, to that number. M cost to 51555, so very cool. Uh, you'll also notice that here, uh, where it says 898566 verified, that's actually the mobile cost system when you upload your database actually tells you within a couple of minutes uh, exactly how many of those numbers are mobile numbers and can receive text messages. Very cool technology, very powerful technology. So again, to emphasize, uh, your organization can, can upload a spreadsheet of every single donor and supporter you've ever had into the mobile cost system. The mobile cost system will then verify all of those phone numbers that are mobile. And then uh, you can actually hit the blue subscribe button to send the required subscription message that essentially notifies the person that your organization would like to keep in touch with them and gives them the unsubscribe language. Um, I'm going to go ahead and send a quick message here just to show you how easy it is to all of you that subscribe to MCOS. I'm just going to, as I paste that in, you'll notice in this screenshot that you just simply set up the message title, you select the campaign, uh, you select the 51555 short code that you would like to send from, and then you pick the list, and right here I'm selecting subscribers for MCOS on 51555, and I'm going to go ahead and set that for immediately and schedule that message. So within two minutes, uh, all of you that just texted that keyword are going to get a link that says, uh, if you'd like to request a mobile cause demo with an expert, uh, go ahead and click that link. Um, Text messages, uh, just to reiterate, are absolutely incredible because what they do is they guarantee donors who want to receive mobile communications, receive mobile communications. Uh, they have proven to be especially effective for notifications, reminders, advocacy, and giving. And we, of course, are very passionate about your organizations uh, not only gaining new young donors, but also engaging donors uh, of all generations through multiple channels. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Chris. Um, actually, but before I do that, I want to make one note. I uh, just want to let all of you know that uh, you're going to receive a follow-up call from a mobile fundraising communication expert as a courtesy, and they would, be, they would love to answer any questions you have about mobile communication and any of our other tools. Um, mobile cause plans, they start at $300 a month. And all mobile cost plans include our full suite of products, which include uh, the mobile-friendly online giving pages you've seen and heard about in this presentation, uh, text-to-donate keywords, uh, an event fundraising thermometer that drives 24% more gifts, uh, crowdfunding for nonprofits, which was featured in the United Way example previously in the presentation, uh, mobile communication, which we have been discussing and which I just demoed, as well as full merchant services uh, and, a, and, a, and a free mobile credit card reader. Um, the Mobile Cause platform is a cloud-based fundraising platform for a new generation of giving that is designed to help nonprofits acquire donors, fundraise at a lower cost and make it easy to give. Um, and as a representative of Mobile Cause, I, my heart and is that nonprofits would implement mobile cause technologies to grow and strengthen their, their, their important causes and the important work that they do. Um, so with that, go ahead, Chris, and take it away with questions and answers. Thanks so much, Jeremy. Wonderful. So again, I think uh, everyone, just a quick reminder, if you missed any of this, we will be sending out a link to the presentation as well as the recorded version of this webinar. So again, you can review uh, any of the data discussion answers here that have been discussed today. Um, and also, yeah, if you have any specific questions about how mobile cause, you know, can help you with all of these things, you know, you will definitely get a call and you can ask some very specific technical questions. Um, but I think, you know, a couple of questions back to our presenters. Um, you know, here's a question about, you know, my NPO runs into um, you know, we often need our donors to give more generally because our field workers' needs change very quickly. Um, how do you propose we tailor our messages to meet specific needs but still obtain funds for, for general purposes? Does that make sense? And, and maybe, Kate, I'll direct this question to you, Kate Schnepple, 
Um, do you have any thoughts on that? Does that question make sense to you? You know, it, it does make sense, and I think it's tricky. We have we obviously really love non restricted unrestricted funds, just like all nonprofits. So you, we do a lot of asks that are more general in nature, so that we can have those unrestricted funds. Um, I think one thing that you could try if you really need something to be unrestricted but you want to be specific would be to do something like we're looking for, you know, 100 people to start giving at a level of $5 per month to support our programming or, or our field work, whatever it is. But so maybe the specificity comes in the terms of the number of the people that you're, the number of people you're seeking to do something. And then I would report back when you've, when you've made it, you know, so that people really feel like, um, that's what you needed and you met, you met your goal and you let them know that you've achieved it. Um, we had a situation like that at one point where we let people know we'd hit a certain goal and our um, co-workers in India got very up in arms with us for, for having said we were going to stop fundraising, but we said, hey, we set a goal, we met it, and we want to let people know that. Um, so I hope that helps a little bit. I think there's always that balance between unrestricted and restricted, and it, it is a fine line to walk. Yes, yes. Well, great answer. Thank you. And so here's a question I think for Leah and Christina potentially is about sort of how lengthy and detailed should the notification of direct mail campaigns be? Um, does that question make sense to both of you and you have, either of you have any thoughts around that? Um, I think that, honestly, it doesn't have to be lengthy. It's just a matter of saying, have you subscribed to our text messaging and just say text whatever the keyword is to the number. And that way, um, they're getting the updates um, that are there. Or um, in our case, what we're going to try to do is, you know, give a short code, like maybe a bit.ly with an ending. Um, a specific ending of donate online for the Salvation Army, and it would take you to a to a mobile cost page. So they would obviously, if they donate, they also subscribe. So it would give two different options. Um, I don't think it has to be lengthy at all. I think you can do it within um, even less than ten words. Got it. And in terms of like actually sending sort of mass texts, I mean, I, you know, I think, you know, potentially Jeremy answered the question by showing everybody, but I guess could either of you, Leo or Christina, talk about like sort of the ease? I mean, how did you actually, was it easy to send mass texts? I mean, and, and you know, how was that actual process of getting that work done? I mean, was it, for, you know, how long did it take? And, you know, that kind absolutely. of thing. Absolutely. It was absolutely really easy. Um, Kelly is our account person, and she's amazing. Um, we got the list uploaded. We sent the subscription text out that is generic that comes from Mobile Cause, um, and it just lets people know that you have been subscribed, and um, then they opt out. They can, push, they can send back stop if they want, and that's how um, I saw a question on there of how what happened to the other 12% of our 88% retention rate. And so those people that decide they don't want to be communicated that way, they can say stop at, at any point and they will no longer receive text messages. But sending out to them, they are in a group or a list is what it's called on mobile cause. And so we just select that list. We put together um, a few options for Christina and her team to pick out the copy for the text of what they want it to be. And then um, we go into Mobile Cause and set up send message and type in the message and send it out to that list, and it's a matter of seconds. Um, the process is a little bit longer just because we have to, you know, get the copy. Of course, that's probably the longest part, but actually navigating through Mobile Cause is very simple. Fantastic. And here's one more question for, for, for you as well, and I think you may have addressed this, but, you, you know, do you feel that the success of your text campaign was due to having like specific campaign to promote, you know, i.e. the bed and bread club? I mean, how did you, um, you know, how did you feel about that in terms of really having specific things to promote? I think that is definitely something that resonates with the Salvation, that um, the community resonates with the Salvation Army is the bed and bread club. 
Um, but I know that we also sent out a text message for Giving Tuesday just saying the Salvation Army is participating in Giving Tuesday. It linked out to a landing page that the donation form for Mobile Cause was embedded into the page along with a video. And um, we saw really great success with that too. And obviously that's still, you know, a direct ask around a specific campaign, but it is generic enough that any nonprofit can participate, especially on that day. Um, and I think the more insider information that you can give to your audience and continue to engage them throughout the year, that they'll be more responsive when you do have that ask. Right, right, fantastic. Okay, great. So let's see, let's find a good question for Molly. Um, you know, in terms of like timing um, and when you send out email um, to like monthly partners, would you think it's like a missed opportunity to not always include a financial ask, like just in regular monthly communications? Like how do you feel about you know, how do you, you sort of divide up that mix? Um, so in our just regular communications, you know, I I don't think that there should be an ask every single time. I We tend to, we try to follow the three-to-one rule, so three pieces of information for every one ask, uh, whether that's a thank you, a follow-up, a, you know, here's what else is new, and then an ask. So we try to follow a three-to-one rule. Fantastic. And, and and I think, and that's I think a good recommendation. I mean, it's it's definitely a uh, you know a standard that's you know sort of talked about a lot, but I think it bears repeating, right? And so then when you're kind of thinking about your three to one, like in terms of, you know, what goes into the three, right? Is it how, how do you kind of figure out like sort of how, you know what's the content that goes in in between the asks? Like what's your you have an approach or a strategy for 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 handling that? Uh, no, I mean, it's a great question. We we have to have content meetings in order to figure it out on a regular basis. Um, and it's not always easy because we're we're always doing a lot of fundraising and we want to keep asking and we want, you know, to um, always, you know, raise more money. Um, but we definitely, we're, we're making an effort to do more thanking than we ever have. Um, so we think that a thank you is, is one of those three things that should definitely be a part of it. Um, and then follow up. People want to know where what happened with the money. Um, we certainly saw that with the MD Unites campaign. The very next day, somebody, you know, somebody would make a donation, and the very next day they would say, so what happened? And, you know, of course, for on our end, it takes a lot of time to, um, to figure that out. Um, so people want to know right away. And we found that even if we didn't know the answer, we didn't have the answer immediately as to what happened, we would try to send out content. Like um, we sent an infographic showing our timeline so people would understand, you know, what steps we were taking when, um, and could follow along with us. So stuff like that. Great. So just a reminder to everybody that's on, we, you know, it's five minutes after the hour, and as I mentioned at the top, we're definitely going to go a little bit longer just to make sure we get to all the questions. You know, we'll probably stay on another 10 minutes. So thanks, everybody, for, for staying with us. And, again, you know, if you have any additional questions, you know, feel free to submit them into the chat, and we'll, we'll see if we can get to them here in the next few minutes. Um, you know, here's a you know final question for you, Molly, and, and you know maybe you can shed some light a little bit on this um, from your exp experience. Sort of like, you know, how would you sort of address those that maybe are at a smaller nonprofit, maybe not national? I mean, obviously you're a local chapter, and so you have your own unique, you know. But any advice for those that maybe not, you know, that don't aren't working with a national chapter, and how do they get sort of attention? How do they break through? How do they get engagement? You know, with with what they're working on. Any any thoughts around that? Uh, sure. I mean, large and small, I think, you know, we all face similar challenges. I mean, we're always asking ourselves the same questions about, you know, how do we um, acquire new um, constituents? How do we, you know, break through? How do we change? We, you know, we, we think that this mobile, um, our mobile strategy is helping us do that. Um, so I, I think regardless of how big or small you are, um, it's a great opportunity to, engage with people differently. We believe this is where the future is, that people are going to be, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be all about mobile. So collecting numbers now is going to be really important. You know, we don't do a whole lot of messaging, but um, 
you know, I think at some point we will. Right now we just understand that collecting those mobile numbers are, is really important. And we think that, um, you know, it's, it's changing people's experience with us a little bit. And that's a good thing. It's, it's making us a little bit cooler, a little, a little hipper. United Way is a very um, kind of old, you know, brand. Um, so, so I would just say try it because, um, you know, and that's what we did. We kind of took a leap of faith. We said, you know, let's just give it a try, and it's been wonderful. We've really, really enjoyed the experience. And um, the team on your end, Mobile Cause, has been great to work with. So, you're, you know, you're always giving us advice on how we can do things better, and that's been great. Fantastic. And so the final question on that topic, like, did you find that you had to take any extra care and sort of, like, communicating to maybe an older demographic about safety or security or the value of, like, engaging with us in this channel? You know, any thoughts around that to, to, to again, those that are thinking, hmm, I wonder how, you know, our donor base is going to react to this? Mm-hmm. Um, we haven't had those questions yet. I'm sure they'll come up at some point, but... Um but we've been we've been pleasantly surprised at how um you know how easy it's been and how receptive people have been to this vehicle so you know at all ages fantastic well great thank you so much Molly I really appreciate it and so I'm turning to Christina you know at a smaller organization you know a couple of questions and I think a lot of folks are here going how do I do this like is it going to take me a ton of time I mean I guess so what would you say in terms of you know, uh, how big is your team? I mean, it sounds, it, it's, it's just, just you. How many people does it take to kind of like add mobile um, to what you're already doing? Yeah, no, it was really easy, surprisingly easy. Um, there we have four staff members at the organization. Um, so I am the only person that deals with mobile cause. Um, setting up the account was crazy simple. Uploading our numbers was crazy simple and mobile cause obviously validates um the numbers as mobile so that was really cool that didn't require any of my time um and if you have time to sit and develop a fundraising strategy it's really simple to just put that into text upload it into mobile cause schedule when you want the text to go out and never think about it again so it's really was really easy to kind of coordinate it into our existing fundraising and communication strategies. Fantastic. And so then, I mean, I guess for, for those that are thinking, geez, how am I going to get this done? I mean, it sounds like in terms of added time, I mean, you know, did it versus like what you were traditionally doing, how much additional time did it really add to what the work you're already, you know, already handling? Yeah. Um, the setup total was maybe 20 minutes. <laughs> um, and, you know, changing the communication into a text is very, very simple as well. Um, so really a minimal amount of time to put into a, a whole new channel of communication. Wow, fantastic. Well, great, everybody. I think in, in terms of time, looks like it's, it's 10 after the hour, so we're going to wrap up. And, again, if you do have any specific questions, um, you can absolutely direct them to the mobile cause teammate that's going to reach out as a courtesy to everybody that's attended today. Um, there's a wealth of information, so feel free to visit us online at mobilecause.com slash go. Um, and again, thank you all to everyone that participated today, Leah, Christina, Kate, Molly, Christina, and of course, Jeremy. Um, we're grateful all of you for your time and, and insights, and please stay tuned to future upcoming webinars as we will be conducting these roughly every month and look forward to you know, presenting new and exciting topics to everyone. So thanks everybody for joining us today. Have a terrific day. <laughs>